morning. I have a question. Do you know what a talent is? Well, sure. I have a talent for playing the piano, and my mom says my brother has a talent for spilling things. Hey! Oh, I'm just kidding. My brother has a real talent for ice skating. Yeah, I can skate pretty good, and I can go backwards and spin and make really fast stops. So, are you saying that your talent is something you do really well or really easily? Yeah, I guess, but even though I have a talent for piano, I still have to practice. Me too. I have to learn new skills so I can skate faster and better. Well, that's awesome. Let's see what Jesus has to say about talent. Today, we're going to read a story. It's from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Jesus tells a story, and in it, he talks about talents. Only in Jesus' time, a talent was money. Jesus once told a story to his friends about a man who was going on a journey. Before the man left, he called three of his servants and gave them some money. To one servant he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to the third servant one talent. He gave to each servant according to their abilities. The servant with five talents immediately went to work and traded with the money, and he earned five more talents. The servant with two talents did the same and earned two more. But the servant with one talent dug a hole and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master returned. He called his servants to see what they had done with the money. The servant with five talents proudly showed his master that he now had ten talents. The servant with two talents also doubled his money and had four talents. The master was very pleased with both of them, saying, Well done, good and faithful servants. Because you have been faithful with a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. But the servant with one talent was afraid. He said, Master, I knew you a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. The master was not happy with his servant. He called him a wicked and lazy servant, saying, you should have at least put my money in the bank so that I could have received it back with interest. The master took the one talent from the lazy servant and gave it to the one with ten talents. Jesus concluded the story by saying, Whoever has been given more, they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have much, even what they have will be taken from them. This parable teaches us about using the gifts and abilities that God has given us and not to be afraid to take risks for God's glory. Jesus encourages us to be faithful and diligent with what we have been entrusted. Were you listening? I have some questions for you. What did the master give to his servants? Well, he gave them the money called talents. Yeah, but he only, he gave them different amounts. And how did the servants use their talents? Um, two of them used the talents to make more, but one just put it in a hole in the ground. And what happened to the servants who used their talents well? Oh, the man was really happy with them. And what about the one who didn't? Uh, the man was angry with him. Um, okay, so I get that he rewarded the first guys who did well with his money, but why was the master so angry with the servant who put his in the hole? The story made it sound like the guy was doing the best he could. Well, that's a good question. 
Let's talk a little more and see if the answer becomes clear. And here's something to think about. The money is called a talent. And your gift is called a talent. And we can think of them both in the same way. What do you mean? You buy things with money and, and you have gifts or talents like piano, playing and ice skating, but you can't buy anything with them today. No, you're right. But um, think of it this way. The man gave his servants talents or money and God gives you talents or, or gifts. The man wanted his servants to use his talents in a wise way, not to hide them in the dirt. Just like God wants you to use your talents or gifts in a wise way and not hide them in the dirt. Suppose I was to give you some talents or money from Jesus' time. What could you do? Well, I could buy flour and sugar and make cookies and then sell them. Oh, and I could buy a rake and go around and rake leaves for money. Wahoo! Those are both great answers. Now, let's take it one step further. How can you use your God-given talent of playing the piano for God? Oh, uh, that's harder. Um, oh, I know. I can play at the care home for the residents. They love to hear music and they like to talk with me. Would that be what you mean? Yes, it is. But what about skating? I don't know if my gift of skating is, is any use to do it for God. No? Are you sure? What if you help new skaters get better? Isn't that a good way to use your gift and make God proud of you? Oh, I never thought of that. And I guess the guy who buried his master's money would be like us hiding our talent and not doing anything good with it. Well done. I think you understand Jesus' message. Remember, God gives us talents. And that's just not playing the piano and skating. It could be you're good at finding things or telling stories, or baking, or folding wash, or running to the store for your mom. God said we are responsible for using our talents or gifts wisely. And God is pleased when we use our gifts and talents for him. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for our talents and gifts. Help us to use them wisely and give us the grace to be humble, respectful, and tolerant today and always. Amen.